What's up, y'all? This is Coach here, Funded again. And um, I said I was going to do this video. I had to break it down in a series. And this is the Proceedings of the National Migration Convention of Colored People. This went down. It's held at Cleveland, Ohio on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the 21st, the 24th, excuse me, the 25th, and the 26th of August. That's why, you know, another reason why we have Black August. 1854. We're going to read into this. We're going to get to their prayer program. And what was the meaning of this convention? That's how we're going to first start it off. You know what I'm saying? On this series' this video. So, what was their meaning? And why was the reason why they had this convention? What was their stuff about it? So, this is what we're going to start the video off on, on this series. Therefore, as the declaration sentiments and platform of this convention be one, resolve the natural equality. The natural equality of the human race. That's number one. Number two, that man by nature free and cannot be enslaved except by injustice or oppression or oppression. Number three, that the right to breathe the air and use the soil on which the creator has placed us in the incoherent with the birth of man in this commonwealth with his existence subsequently, whatever infers with this sacred inheritance is the jolly ally of slavery in our war against the decree of heaven. Hence, man cannot be independent without possessing the land on which he resides. Number four, that whatever interferes with, his with the natural rights of man should be met with him with adequate resistance, right? It says, at number four, it says adequate resistance. Whatever interferes with your natural rights of man should be met from him with adequate resistance. resistance. Number five, that no, under no circumstances let the consequences be as they may. We will ever submit to enslavery. Let the power that attempted emanate from whatever source it will. All right. Number six, that no people can have political liberty without the sovereign right to exercise a freeman will. Number seven, that no individual is politically free who is deprived of the right of self-representation. Okay. So we gotta find out what self-representation means. We're gonna get into all this stuff. Number eight, that to be a free man necessarily implies the right of elective franchise. The key word is the elective franchise. You gotta remember that. Number nine. That the, the, that the privilege of voting does not necessarily imply an exercise of elective franchise, since a vote may be given while the franchise is denied to the individual who gives the vote. Now, this is the real key linchpin of the whole thing right here. You know what I'm saying? Number nine. I'm going to read it again. That the privilege of voting does not necessarily imply an exercise of the elective franchise. Since a vote may be given while the franchise is denied to the individual who gives the vote. Number 10, that the elective franchise necessarily implies eligibility to every position attainable. The indisputable right of being chosen or elected as a representative of another, and otherwise, then this is the term, is the sheerest imposition. And Dehasusun. Number 11, that a people who are liable under any pretext or circumstances whatsoever to enslave by laws of the country cannot be free in that country because the rights of the freemen are necessarily sacred and inviolable. Number 12, that as man and equals, we demand every political right privilege and position to which the whites are eligible in, in the United States. We would either attain to these or accept nothing. That's, no, that's number 12. Number 13. That is, as colored people in whatever part of the country we may be located, we will accept of no political rights nor privilege, but shall as but as shall be impartial in their provisions, nor will we acknowledge these, except extended alike to each and every colored person in such 
state, or territory. Number 14, that the political distinctions in many states made by whites and accepted by the colored people comprise in many instances our greatest social curses and tend more than anything else to divide our interests and make us indifferent to each other's welfare. Number 15, we pledge our integrity to use all honorable means to unite us as one people on this continent. Now, I don't know if you know, I want African people, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking it as one African one group of people, you know what I'm saying? Number 16, that we have no confidence in any political party nor politician by whatever name they may be styled or whatever their position, who acknowledges the right of man to hold property in his fellow man, whether the right be admitted as necessary, part of the National Compact, the provisions of the Missouri Compromise, the detestable and insulting and degrading Fugitive Slave Act, or more recently, contemptible Nebraska-Kansas Bill. Number 17, at the Act of Congress 1850, known as the Fugitive Bill, we declared to be a general law tending to the virtual enslavement of every color person in the United States. And in consequence, we abhor its existence, dispute its authority, refuse submission to its provisions, and hold it in state of the most contemptible abrogation. So they said they don't even recognize that law. They said black people shouldn't even recognize the law, period. The law being the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. Number 18. That as a people, we will never be satisfied nor content until we occupy a position where we acknowledge a necessary constitute and a ruling element of the country in which we live. Now, the key words in this one is the necessary constitute and the ruling element of the, the ruling element of the country in which we live. All right. And they say what country? They said that country, the country in which we live. Number 19. And no oppressed people have ever attained their rights by voluntary acts of generosity on part of the oppressor. Which is true, you know what I'm saying? No oppressed people have ever, ever attained their rights by voluntary acts of generosity on part of the oppressor. You know, we gotta think about that. That's, that's a true statement. 20, that it is futile hope on our part to expect such results through the agency of moral goodness on the part of our white American oppressors. And that is futile to the hope on part, on our part, to expect such results through the agency of the moral goodness on the part of our white American oppressors. So you're not gonna get it from them, baby. They knew it back then in 1854, they knew even prior to that. 21, that all the great achievement by the Anglo-Saxon race have been accomplished through the agency of self-interest, which is true. You could just look at, you know, we could bring up Thomas Edison. You know what I'm saying? He didn't been all that shit. But for, for the agency of self-interest, he gonna take he got credit for all that shit. We know it was Lewis Lattimore and people like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, other guy, I can't think of the guy's name right now. Right? You know what I'm saying? McCoy. You know what I'm saying? Gerald McCoy. People like that that was building stuff up. You know what I'm saying? Number twenty-two. That the liberty of a people is always insecure who do not have absolute control of their own political destiny. Let me read twenty-two again. The liberty of a people is always insecure who do not have a absolute control of their own political destiny. And you know, we don't have that today. We still don't have today. We never had absolute control of our own political destiny. Still the same thing going on today. This is one of the things we never changed on. That if we desire liberty, it can only be attained at the price of which others have paid for it. And what's the wages of liberty? You know what I'm saying? Is death. All right, you know what I'm saying? If we desire liberty, it can only be attained at the price which others have paid for it. I mean, people gotta die. 24, that we are willing to pay that price. Let the cost be what it may. You know what I'm saying? So we know we gotta be willing to pay that price. In order to attain liberty, we gotta do some, you know, killing and some dying. You know, our people knew that way back when. You know, you're not gonna march away to freedom. You're not gonna vote your way to freedom out of it. You know what I'm saying? They knew this back in 1854. 25, according to the present social system of a civilized society, equality of a person that is recognized by the, their equality 
and attainments as with individuals, so as it is with classes and communities. Therefore, we impress on the colored races throughout the color race, races is plural. I want to make sure that's emphasizing this. Races is plural. Throughout this continent and the world, the necessity of having their children and themselves properly qualified in every respectable vocation pertaining to the industrial wealth and accumulation of occupation of the arts, sciences, trades, and professions of agriculture, commence manufacturing, so as the equal imposition, the leading characters in the nations of the earth, without which we cannot at best but occupy a position of subserviency. So we're not doing stuff to occupy the trade, the, art, the arts, the sciences, the trades, and the professions of agriculture, commence, commences business and manufacturing, that's industry, so as to equal imposition the leading characters and nations of the earth, without which we cannot at best, that's at best, you can occupy a position of servancy, which basically has happened to us. Because we fell flat on our heels and over here with this stuff. 26, that the potency and respectability of a nation, remember they call us a nation, now, everywhere you read this stuff, they call it, you know what I'm saying, nation, they talking about us as a nation. The responsibility and the respectability of a nation or people depends upon, entirely upon the position of their women. Therefore, it is essential to our elevation that the female position of our children be instructed in the arts and sciences pertaining to the highest civilization. You know, that's number 26. 26, the potency and the respectability of the nation or a people depends entirely the position of their women. Therefore, it's essential to our elevation. It's essential. You're not going to get nowhere without a black woman. When I see, you know what I'm saying, like how people got mad at me about talking about dying women, you know what I'm saying? Well, a white man is the most terrorist person on earth, but you fucking one. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get nowhere without a black woman. That's your best friend. Wayne Blaine Pierce. She properly understands. And she go through more worse stuff than... than ourselves being black males. So we gotta understand that. That's a very, very important one. Number 27, that we will forever discountenance all individuals' distinctions among us, such as, you know what I'm saying, light skin, dark skin, with um, prior back there, different tribes and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? We gotta forever let that shit go. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and nappy my hair straight. You know how people get down. You know how our people is sometimes. Number 28, that no such people can ever attain to greatness who lose their identity as they must rise entirely upon their own native merits. Now that's a very important one too. You can't lose your culture. You know what I'm saying? No such be there that no people as such can ever attain to greatness who loses their identity. So when you got these people running around saying they this and the saying they that, and you know what I'm saying, and blase spleen, you know, that you, once you lost your identity, you, you're not going nowhere. You're not going to attain greatness. You're going to be subservient. And that's what you see a lot of black people now doing in the LGB community. You know what I'm saying? They beefing about Aboriginal stuff. Then they beefing about this. You know what I'm saying? They beefing about that. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to hold on to the identity. Then it causes a part of self hate. So they're never going to really reach greatness per se. You know what I'm saying? They want to be part of the feminist movement. They never gonna reach right. You seen what happened with that one? The white girl feminist came out and told the black girl feminist, "Hey, you need to, you know, deny, you know, repeatedly deny Farrakhan, telling you, nigga, we still run this." You know what I'm saying? But as I showed before in 26, being a feminist is not the black woman identity. Her identity is right here, right beside you. You know what I'm saying? On the left hand side, being the spirit of the nation. Number 29, that we should forever, that we should ever cherish our identity of origin and race as preferable in our estimation to any other people. See, we should forever cherish our identity to our origin and race as preferable to our estimation any other people. You gotta love being African. Like I said, you should dress up every Friday in dashikis and wearing African medallions, you know what I'm saying? To cherish the identity and the origin of your race. I love your people. 30, the relative term Negro, African, Black, colored, and mulatto, when applied to us, shall be held with the same respect and pride and synonymous with the term Caucasian, white, Anglo-Saxon, and European when applied to that class of people. 
Now, on this tip, on the 30 tip, um, people was calling themselves African Americans. So when you see so called scholar, and this book is from, 19, from 1854. You know what I'm saying? And then it, it says it in this book. They people was calling themselves African Americans. So when you see so called scholars talking about, well, we weren't African American. That term came up from Jesse Jackson. Just bring this stuff on up. Bring up Ida B. Wells, too. You know what I'm saying? She brought, she used the term a lot, too. So when people say that stuff, that's something they don't know their history that's going off of just bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Some more, you know, they're not cherishing the identity and the origin of the race. You know what I'm saying? Trying to run away from it, trying to run away from the origin and stuff. You can't hide from this. It's written all over your face. This plan. 31. That as a people determined to be free, we individually pledge ourselves to support and sustain on all occasions by every justifiable effort, as far as possible, the declaration set forth in this Bill of Sentiments. Now, before I cut this video, I want to get into like what it's about number nine. There's a difference between suffrage and franchise. Right now, when we have black people have suffrage, suffrage is the vote. Our people in this, in this election committee right here never wanted that. We're going to break that down right now. They want to franchise. Suffrage and franchise are assembly dissimilar. Suffrage implying to the mere privilege or permission, because it's a civil right. Civil right means you got to ask another man to get, to get the permission from another man. You know what I'm saying? You can see that in the, in the, in the, in the um, U.S. Constitution. With you know what I'm saying, the 15th Amendment, and also you can see that in the uh, the, 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 the voting rack of 1965. You know what I'm saying? All going back to Dred Scott, that the white man can, you know, he had to accept none of your rights. You know what I'm saying? Because Dred Scott case is still in full effect. You know what I'm saying? Roger B. Taney said in the Dred Scott that, you know, he don't have is that bound to respect. The white man is not bound to respect your rights. You know what I'm saying? That's how we got suffer rich, which is merely, which is, which is back to the case, quote, implying the mere privilege or permission to give a vote, while franchise implied a right and a knowledge authority of eligibility and attainment, or in plain language still, the right to have being elevated to every position within the gift of a side of the sovereign people. You know what I'm saying? Within the gift of the sovereign people. This is elective franchise, while voting is a mere permission, a thing suffered to be done. Let's give an example of this. In France, Louis Napoleon permitted every man to vote for him, but none dared vote for any other person. Thus, those who were elevated him to the presidency could not themselves be so elevated. Here's an exercise of suffrage without elective franchise. Louis Napoleon himself, out of 40 million of France, being the only person at the time who possessed the elective franchise, being the only person who could be elevated by election, he were by election to position, and all others were elevated, attaining their position upon his appointment. Now, when you compare the two, you know what I'm saying, and once again, that, you know, elected franchises, you know, with a sovereign people. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing, the sovereign people is a nation. Our, our ancestors in this kind, in this declaration, never really wanted to vote or be partake in the system. They wanted their own sovereign nation.